Hi, I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and welcome back to The Hive. In this quick tips video, we'll be covering the right ways to get help with your home automation projects. We'll cover a few different places to get help and then we'll cover the right way to go about asking for help. So while I roll the intro, take a moment to hit subscribe and while you're at it, maybe click the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos each week and let's get started. So right out of the gate, I wanna be clear. The reason that I'm making this video is actually because I have a rude comment that someone left on one of my earlier videos. Not only was the comment pretty negative, but it never actually asked a question. So I wanted to make a video so that all of you watching have a much better idea of the right way to go about getting help. Let's start with where to get help and the right place is going to depend a fair bit on the project that you're working on. Now, the first place you should be looking is the documentation for the specific integration you're working on on the Home Assistant website. I've lost count of the number of issues that have been fixed by myself just by simply quickly rereading the integration documentation on the Home Assistant site and then double checking the YAML. And that raises another point. Before anything else, check your YAML. Indentation specifically can cause a big headache and a lot of swearing, and it's a very simple thing to overlook because white space is hard to see. The second place to look for help are the Home Assistant community pages. The Home Assistant community pages are an awesome resource for help and inspiration for your home automation projects. The searchable topics are broken into categories and you can find the right category and then ask your questions in the forums. So it's definitely a great place to try and get help. Now, like most forums, provided you're respectful and follow the rules, everyone there is pretty friendly. Something else to mention here is that both on the Home Assistant website and on the forums website, there's this need help link. So if we click on that, it actually shows us the different ways that we can get help, including those forums that we just mentioned. There's also a Discord chat server. You can also follow Home Assistant on Twitter, join the Facebook community, and even post in the subreddit. If the project you're having trouble with is an open source GitHub project, such as WLED, which I have here, then the best place to look for support is on the WLED page. In the case of WLED, there's a wiki with knowledge base articles on how to resolve certain issues with your WLED installation. And you can also raise issues on most GitHub projects as well by raising the issue there. And of course, the last place that I'll mention that you can get help is from me. If you're looking for help on a home automation project, ask me. There's plenty of different ways to get in touch with me. The comments section down below is a great start. But if you're shy and you don't want to post in a public forum, you can also find HiveMind Automation on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook to ask questions on there. I do try to respond to all comments and messages, but if it does take me a little while, don't be discouraged. I will get to you eventually, and I'm happy to help where I can. And that leads me to the next section, and that is how to ask for help that will actually get an answer. Now, in my day job, I work in IT as a system administrator, and a lot of tickets get raised that could be solved a lot quicker by following some really simple tips. So not only are these tips helpful for getting help with Home Assistant, but for getting help in general as well. Now, the first tip is to articulate your problem statement properly, not your proposed solution. An example of this from my day job would be when I open this application, I get this error and then you copy and paste the error or attach a screenshot. Now that's defining the problem. If you were to define the solution, you would say something like, I need to get admin rights so that I can uninstall and reinstall this application. And when it comes to getting help with Home Assistant, the same thing applies. Define the problem. For example, I've set up the IKEA TradFree integration in Home Assistant 
but I can't control my lights. The second tip here is to provide as much detail as possible. Now in the context of Home Assistant, the best thing to do here would be to copy and paste the relevant sections of your configuration file. And in some cases, you may also need to provide the relevant sections of your log files as well. It's also important to provide the details of any troubleshooting steps that you've already attempted. Don't lie about what you've tried as well. Now it's important to provide as much detail as you can so that we can help give a quick response to the question. The biggest time sink in any troubleshooting operation is going back and forth to gather details. It is recommended that you anonymize any logs and YAML files before sharing so that you don't share passwords and other personal details, but don't hide the useful information. The third tip here is to be patient. Sometimes it does take a little while to come up with an answer. The answer is not always obvious and analyzing logs, YAML and other code can take some time. And my last tip, and this one is probably the simplest, but also the most important, is to be respectful. I can tell you right now, if you're rude and disrespectful, the last thing anybody is going to want to do is to help. And there's more than one part to this as well. Not only should you be respectful in the way you ask your question, but also the way you respond when you are presented with a potential solution. If for example, you've already tried some troubleshooting that's recommended, but you didn't tell us that you've tried that troubleshooting, then how are we to know? Don't get angry if we ask you to try something that you've already tried. Now, I will say that the comment that spurred this video was kind of rude, but I will say that the joke's on you if you do post a negative comment on any of my videos. YouTube doesn't actually care about the sentiment of a comment. Any comment at all boosts my engagement score, meaning that the YouTube algorithm will recommend my video to more people. That being said though, there is an old English proverb that you catch more flies with honey than with vinegar, meaning quite simply that you'll get better results being polite than being rude and gruff. The whole reason I started this channel is to help people who are getting into home automation with Home Assistant. So if you are respectful and you ask your question, I will happily do what I can to help. And in some cases, I'll even go out of my way to find answers for you. But, and I don't like to be negative, if you can't be respectful, you're probably not going to get any response at all. And if it's a YouTube comment, you'll have helped me gain more views anyway. And this is the same when you're posting on forums, in Discord, or even logging a ticket with your IT department at work. You should always try to be respectful, especially when you are asking for help. So there you have it. These are my tips for getting help, whether it's with home automation or other technology problems. That's all we have for this video, and I hope that I can help you in your home automation journey in the future. Be sure to comment down below with a home automation idea that you'd like to see me cover in a future video. And if you've got a question about one of your home automation projects, feel free to ask down below. Don't forget to follow Hivemind Automation on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Links to those are in the video description down below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button and give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing now. While you're at it, hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos each week. And lastly, if you like what I'm doing here and you want to help to support the channel, there is a buy me a coffee link in the video description down below. Contributions through Buy Me A Coffee are put towards making more and better content for you to enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.